And next we have a preview. Uh, it, so it's a film that's made by Amy Stevens, who is a film and TV production student at Liverpool Media Academy. Now, Amy contacted Beat SCAD. She wanted to make a film to raise awareness of SCAD. Um, and sadly, this was because Amy's mum's died. Amy's mum died following SCAD. So Amy wanted to interview SCAD patients. So we put that call out to the community and volunteers came forward. So Amy contacted three of the patients, Kaz, Elizabeth and Erica. And Beat SCAD trustee Debbie Oliver also provided lots of information and arranged for Amy to talk to Dr. Adlam. Amy's, for, um, Amy's film was launched on the 21st of September, which is the second anniversary of her mum's death. So Amy has kindly recorded a clip um, to explain why she made the film. So I'll just hand over to Debbie to play uh, the video for you. I made the film in memory of my mum, Anita. I released it on the 21st of September this year, and it has been her two year anniversary since her death. I lost my mum suddenly to SCAD. She had just turned 49 years old and was a perfectly fit and healthy person. She was always so full of life, always happy and always smiling. I just couldn't understand what happened as she had no risk factors for heart disease. So I wanted to go on a journey and use my skills as a filmmaker to find answers. My mum had her first SCAD six months before she passed away. I know that she suffered with her mental health afterwards as she was worried about it happening again. But when she did fall sick again, nobody listened to her and I wish I had listened to her more too. But my mum just looked so healthy, I just couldn't imagine anything being wrong with her. The hospital completely ignored her previous diagnosis of SCAD, but also couldn't work out what was wrong with her. They did all sorts of tests, but literally couldn't find a cause to why she was so poorly. She spent three weeks in hospital and just gradually got worse. She had picked up a few illnesses on the ward she was on. And with me being 37 weeks pregnant with my daughter, she would not allow me to visit her. And she said that my health was more important. Three weeks had passed and we talked about her being able to come home at Halloween time and that we'd have a party and all this. And then my daughter, Libby Anita, was born. And my mum was so happy that we were both safe and well. But unfortunately, my mum was never able to meet her. When I got home from the hospital with Libby, we went to take a nap. And I got a phone call off my sister saying that she doesn't think my mum has long left. I was in complete shock. I got to the hospital and my mum went into cardiac arrest. They did try to take her to surgery, but they just said there's nothing they can do. And even then, they still didn't know what was wrong with her. It took a month or so to get her a coroner's report and to see that her cause of death was coronary artery dissection. Knowing that she had a scad six months prior, why didn't the doctors check this? I just didn't understand, but it seems to be the lack of awareness. Making this film is a very personal journey, and I'm really hoping it will have an impact and more people know about SCAD. I hope you all enjoy it, and I thank you to all that was involved. I spoke to three amazing women who were willing to share their stories about SCAD. Honestly, you guys were amazing, and I really thank you for being a part of the film. I also got the opportunity to speak with Dr. Adlam, who gave me lots of information into the causes, treatment, and where the research is currently at. I just want to give a huge thank you to Debbie Oliver for helping me to make this film a reality and providing me with all the research that I needed to make this film. I hope you enjoy it. So we will provide the link to Amy's film after today's event. It's, you know, it's just under half an hour, so we, we won't show that today, um, you know, to watch it in your own time. It, it is a really powerful project. Um, and so I'd just like to thank everybody who was who was involved in that. And it will help us to raise awareness. So, you know, this, this is a difficult story to tell. And I'm very conscious that the Beat SCAD updates to date have already mentioned a number of fatal SCAD cases. So um, I'd just like to hand over to Dr. Adlam to share a few words. Thanks, Bex. So, um, you know, obviously this is a, you know, a very emotive story and I guess, you know, motivates us in the clinical community and the research community to keep um, moving forward and focusing on understanding this condition and doing uh, the things that we do to 
I'll work it out. I think it, it, it is important to say, and we talked a little bit about the Facebook page as well a, a little bit earlier on. Um, it is important to say that obviously you, you, you know, these tragic cases achieve prominence in terms of, you know, uh, because they are emot emotive, but they don't ne necessarily represent um, the uh, overall risk of SCAD. What we know from the registry is that, and this is not just the UK registry, but internationally, is that actually the outcomes for the overwhelming majority of SCAD patients are excellent and that the prognosis is good and that, that again, the overwhelming majority of patients with SCAD will return to um, you know normal life. And obviously we're looking at <laughs> lots of faces that are uh, on at various points on the journey to achieving that. So yes, we should remember and use uh, as motivation the tragic cases. And again, sometimes on Facebook, again, we see a prominence of people that are having a tougher time because those people are more likely to be posting and asking questions. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's everyone's experience. And I just want to say that again for you know, people that are coming more, more recently to this that obviously those patients that recover quickly and you know are, are sitting on a beach somewhere sipping pina coladas they're not necessarily posting on on facebook if that makes sense so um yeah i just think we, we have to remember that the context for most patients is not um uh, uh, like this tragic story but tragic stories are important for helping us to motivate and focus and try to do the things that we can do to, to make sure that those tragedies are minimized as far as is humanly possible by new treatments, new strategies, and of course, education to make sure people um, recognize and respond to the condition when they see it. Thank you. Um, and, and I think actually just to add about the Facebook group, I mean, it is actually, it, it is a very positive environment as well. You, you are right. There are people who are more in need that will post, but it, it's also a very in, inspiring environment. And I think that's why so many people do remain active in it, because people do share their successes um, as well as their hard times. And I think that's what then makes it more normal for us all because we see the good and we see see the bad and you know and we can rejoice together and, and we can also you know feel feel that pain and struggle again together so you know I think that's really just what makes that group so so fantastic. Absolutely and I think one of the great things about Beat Scad is that you can see that spectrum so people that are arriving new to this condition can you know um, see from the you know the other members of the group um that you know scad is something that you know we can we can work through and make sure that we have a really positive future absolutely okay thank you